Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Yay! Yeah, what's Yay. up? What's up? Fuck. Fucking Jeff Ritter, bringing fuck, it back. Fuck. Hey, fucking wanna, Jeff Ritter. I want to start Why? off with we fuck all that conversation, all right? <laughs> yes. Jack Black. Whoever the sweet lady was that sent that out, thank you. I'm we excited to about use it on the a podcast tonight. And she sent us out a lovely gift package. And I'm pretty sure Baker's in on the uh, the, the deodorant now, huh? No, I got the, the I got the Supreme Cream uh, triple cushion shave lather. And then you let me smell the deodorant. And I got to be honest with you, man. It was it, it was it was refreshing. I enjoying it. And they're Thank not you. paying us. Just it's what I'm I use. So Thank excited. you. I've but got some wax listen, pomade. Let's get to the fucking point. I'm driving this tonight. We have exactly. a guest. We have a guest, and Ross is drunk. By the way, doing a podcast in a fucking driveway. Sounds yeah. He's in a driveway, like yeah. a fucking. Who talks he's like, like a animal, he's like a high schooler in the back of a Volkswagen right now. <laughs> But we have a, we have an amazing guest today, and it is in the space that I truly love. Um, he is the first ever double champ in Bellator. He is Ryan Darth Bader, and welcome to the studio. And thanks for coming out, dude. Thanks for having me. What's I like masturbator better. Masturbator, yeah, I that was too. really cool. I like that one. I did too. I will say this: they always say don't meet your idols in in real life, and they'll let you down. And I think that that goes in the space of when you see influencers and people that are amazing in their trade, and you tend to meet them like fuck. But spending the whole day today, and we'll get in that later fuck man you're a cool ass dude fucking awesome you you bow hunt you're just a down-to-earth motherfucker that works hard and fucking stoked. i appreciate it same about you guys also thank you and you i'm glad to have some someone fun. that like lifts weights and has tattoos on these fucking well, hey, you know, well so all of a sudden oh, i need to on. fucking get some tattoos now i've got five cool. tattoos thank you just yeah, but they're all weights. shitty they're shitty why am i a bad guy you don't lift weights. You go to Anytime Fitness and fucking butt fuck he the, does, the... He does the stair-stepper elliptical thing yeah, yeah. for five wow. minutes. He's like, man, wow. I did the gym today. Ross. Man, I did Ross, the gym fuck today. them. Hey, five minutes is better than what JT did. Listen, he did no minutes. It, <laughs> it, it is. Guess it is. what? And, and, and by, by the way, I love how you're trying to impress Ryan by never meet your idols. I met my idol. OJ Simpson was a fucking great guy. And we had a lovely afternoon together. And he didn't murder me at all. So I understand about meeting your idols and being impressive, Matt. So just it's not just you, my man. Wouldn't you want to be murdered by O.J. Simpson? Though? If, there, if you <laughs> yeah. were gonna, if you were gonna, if you had to be murdered, who would who would it, who would it be I by? Like that question. Yeah, who would it be idol, by? Right? If I had to be murdered by someone, who would it be by? Um, well, actually, give this the uh, person and, the then, and then the manner that in which that they murder you, Travis Pastrana. What? And how did he do it? Come you, on. The, the, this is a true story. Sky he would, he would convince me with a terminal illness illness to uh, jump a uh, backhoe. A bulldozer. A bulldozer off of a Las Vegas casino tower. Yeah. And no, we, I like we, that. JT and I have talked about this. We were going to yeah. plan it out. We are going to get OSHA involved, like have broadcast the shit out of it. OSHA? Publish it. Live, yeah. Yeah, we're going to wear all the rules. <laughs> You'd have to wear a hard hat and a vest. Yeah, okay. we'll follow the compliance rules. I, I was confused in the OSHA thing. And so, like, if I had, like, terminal cancer, it'd be like, you know what? Fuck this shit, man. We're going to make some money off this bitch. My boys are going to have a good time. And be like, Baker Levitt's going to jump a bulldozer off a fucking From casino. one building to yeah. another building. And then, yeah. d- but get it, like, get that engine where you could be like, <laughs> bow, 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 bow. And it's the most That's lackluster. Nah, 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 exactly. Then it goes, clink, clink. Clink, 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 boom. <laughs> Televised. Everybody's high fiving though from Fuck the crew. Yeah. Like, yeah, we pulled like, it off. Yeah. <laughs> Suck my ass. Hey, Dave, do me a favor. Can you actually pull up? I had posted on uh, while we talk about the shenanigans and keep going. I'd posted a thread in the Drinking Bros podcast listeners. Go on there for me. And uh, they had some really cool questions for Ryan that we'll get in later in the show. I just want to put um, it there. But no, right. yeah, uh, know, Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Right. Freddy Krueger, because that's the first scary movie I ever saw as a kid. And it fucked me up. And Fuck Freddy Cougar. That guy comes in my dreams. I am fucking him up. I am a weird dude. Ryan, you got to wait. I'm, to- I'm there yeah, with you yeah. on that one, though. You that, want uh, Freddy Cougar? The movie where he was coming underneath the, like, the sheets and shit. Fuck him. I was a kid. Same deal, well, man. The, re- t- the reason that they fuck with you coming in the sheets, right? Remember when you were a kid? Because you came as long as kid. <laughs> It's very true. As I'm long confused. As, as long as you had your, your feet inside the sheets, that was your safety yeah. zone. You're like, nothing can yeah. touch me. But then it crawled up the sheets. You're like... Yo, you're telling me that the sheet's not protecting me from, like, the demons, <laughs> oh, man? Like, just, so you're oh. saying Freddy Krueger, too? Yeah. I'm not saying two. I can't follow up his... Oh, okay. Strana so then who story. do you want? Shit, I don't know. I guess you got to go out. You got to go out big, Not right? Fedor. I was going to say, he, yeah, he, was, he wanted to die with Fedor and, yeah. and knocked him out. And Fedor's a legend. Fucking... I don't know. I think you just got to go out, like... 
you know, I, I was always uh, fascinated with serial killers back in the day. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I took the, the college course and all that. So maybe like a, a Ted Bundy with a piece of rebar. Oh, oh wow. Have you yeah. watched that documentary oh, right. on him? That dude, uh, no, no I, I, cut it off. Ooh. Cut it off. Cut it off. Couldn't That's do it. That's crazy. Scary right? Shit, all right, where bro. are you at? Me? Yeah. How are Fuck. you getting murdered? Uh, Probably, you know, while I'm... Betty White. My penis is in a female's butt. Yeah? And, yeah. And, and then, then she clenches murdered? it, and it rips it off, and then I bleed out. Okay. Oh, it, God. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, Jesus Ross, Christ. what about you, man? It's got dark. Yeah. Yeah, mine's, mine's Jessica Tandy from uh, Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. I, I want her to sneak up on me and then, you know, scare me to death with her oldness. That and bitch. I want to fucking oh, die. Wow. Or, yeah. uh, obviously, Jared, and this is you and I, this is a fan fave, and Frank for both of us. I, ca- I would I would want to go back in time and have Anne Frank murder us. Nah. You know, I I, re- I, I, I want to change mine, Ross. I think that I would want to fight, like, the world's greatest mammal, and I know I'm going to lose, like, a fucking grizzly bear, or just, like, lock seven elk. You're not elk, murdered. Seven, That's not a murder. Seven elk in rut, <laughs> and I have to fight the elk That's off. That's not a murder. But, but they're going to murder me, Ma- but Ma- at least I, have, no, I can fight count. back for Let me say this. He said, who is going to murder me? Here, here's here. what I want. Well, I want to be in front of a fireplace on a nice carpet fighting Forrest Griffin while fucking Leonardo DiCaprio is drinking fine bourbon, watching just like in Django, and he passes him a hammer, and Forrest just makes a joke and laughs and then hammers my fucking head. Jared, that's super racist. Again, it's too white. Yeah, you're, 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 you can you're can never be a mandingo. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can we, <laughs> I just want to be a mandingo. You're not a mandingo. Can, ever. We have, can we have a moment here? Jared Taylor knew the name of an MMA fighter. <laughs> Forrest Griffin. <laughs> yeah. He did. Let me oh shake your hand. My God, dude. Oh, you're sick too. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- yeah does Jack Black make hand sanitizer? I don't think so. But no, Matt, so. to your point about the grizzly, if you were getting killed by a grizzly, as your friend, they eat your butt first. As your no, friend, they no, they, they fucking crush they, your they skull. They eat your butt first. I, no, that's, that's a wolf. That's a real. That's no, a wolf. it's real. That's me. Grizzly a, bears eats butts. Matt, that was me fine. when I was single. Matt, so, <laughs> I would, I would go, I would go, I would take Logan and Evan. Um, JT and Ross would drive us there. We would go hunt the grizzly and we would kill it, and then we would eat the motherfucker with you in his belly. Oh. But we let's whoa, wait for whoa, him whoa, to whoa, digest. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we want. You don't want to open me up and I come out like a like a little fucking like yeah. a year. Come out, no. I would. I'd like you have nice legs. I'd like one leg. Let but me get a whole leg. With it? But, what are you going to do with but, it? But, but let the bear digest my power, and then when you eat it, you're like, I feel like I got. What's going to take us a while to find him? Yeah. You know, yeah, what's going to take us a while to get him? <laughs> Once but, we start picking through his shit and seeing his tattoos and stuff, <laughs> yeah, then we know we're then we know we're good. And then know? the bears got tattoos. You're like, whoa. Yeah, the man. bears all sh- <laughs> the bear shaved. Osmosis <laughs> Jones, man. Just the, he's got a beard bear. Yeah. Just the beard yeah, just bear. the beard is on his bear. <laughs> and then people would walk in the office and then. And we'd be like, oh, that's a nice grizzly. Like, yeah, this is the bear. We'd come around the Matt. corner and Rocco's just fucking it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> bear Mish. Okay. <laughs> Ryan. It's a callback. It's Ryan, a callback. Call bear Ryan Mish. Mater, welcome. Hey. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Here we go, I guess. Huh? Look, how, do the the hey, yeah. how do you feel about the show? Hey, let's go. How do you feel about the show so far? We started we, off hot. Yeah. It, it, yeah. We come in hot in this shot. <laughs> We're going hot. You know. And listen, I, uh, you know, I'm drinking tonight. My wife... Uh, we we forgot keys, so I get an Uber home tonight. So maybe we make this an hour and a half episode. I don't think we have yes! anywhere to go. You know, nowhere. Anyways, let's 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 deep dive into Ryan a little bit because you are you've been in MMA for so fucking long. You, I mean, the, the fact if someone doesn't know your name in MMA would be ludicrous to me. You had a really good run in the UFC, and then you know I think your last stint was what seven and one. You're fifteen and five in the UFC, and then you transitioned over to Bellator. Made a huge impact over there. Won the light heavyweight championship. And then, not only did you fucking get the heavyweight championship, you fucking fought tooth and nail through the Grand Prix Challenge, which is, I love that format. So fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. But you beat King Mo in crazy fashion. You made uh, Matt Mitrione look like he didn't know how to wrestle, which I know he's a great guy, but fucking impressive. And then knocking out Fader probably arguably one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. And again, very similar fashion to how you did King Mo. Like, Fuck man, like congratulations, like badass motherfucker. Yeah, dude. thank you, thank you. Yeah, that last fight though was uh, kind of the pinnacle, you know, for me. If you ask any MMA fan who's their favorite fighter, Fedor's in their top three for sure. Right. Usually, you know. Yeah, yeah, hey, and Ryan, to, to that point, I watch, I watch your knockout on Joe Rogan live. By the way, I don't know if you 
Yeah, that I, I saw that. That was cool to see. You know, I'm a fan. Man, of the podcast I could not too, believe yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I was watching Joe Rogan. Uh, you know, obviously Brendan Schaub, who's Black Rifle Coffee favorite. Yeah, they shouted out Black Rifle on the video. They were all watching live, and Eddie Bravo actually picked you to win. Yeah, in the first, first round, round by a knockout. knockout. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, and for me, for like I said, the pinnacle. I, like, what else? Yeah, I can go and defend the belt and all that, but what else are is there to do go in there and beat one of the greatest heavyweights of all time not only that but do it in a grand prix a, right grand prix a two yeah. division champion and you're doing it you're you're fighting for the heavyweight championship at the same time it wouldn't you know with him and chel Sonnen fighting before if chel would have made it in it it'd have been like two 205ers fighting each other right you know and you beat chel like who yeah. cares? Right? I feel like Great. you would have whipped Chell's ass. You know, so but and I'm a with Chell's Fedor, son of fan. You know, I am too. You know, and and it's just that much sweeter. You know, with this whole run and to cap it off with Fedor for sure. I feel like the the Grand Prix format is so rewarding because you, you see, and, and and I'm not just like sucking your dick here. Maybe I'm. I'll get shit talked about it, but uh, I think that like you have these double champs out there in the UFC that they they win the belt and immediately like how to replicate Conor McGregor. Yeah, like you know TJ Dillashaw, huge fan of him, but dropped down you know against Segundo. Yep, and all Too that much weight. Too and all much that weight loss. I agree, but but all that jazz. But it's super cool to see. Like, no, I'm going to take a run, and I got to run through three motherfuckers to get this title. It's not just like you showed up and got that title shot. Like, that's impressive, especially your the way you won. You were, were you, did you ever feel in those three fights any of them that you were in danger? Because it didn't seem. No, like I, it. I didn't get punched in the face in three fights. Let alone, <laughs> I don't think in Bellator and even go back to UFC. You know, but um, you know, obviously I had losses there and whatnot. But in my last. You know, I fought Iller Latifi. Um, I got dropped once in there, but I knocked him out pretty good. In in Noguera fight, I didn't get hit. So no- Davis was maybe, another legend. He Jeez, maybe Louise. a jab, whatever. From then on out, I haven't got punched in the face, so it's that's always a good. That's thing. That's why you're like fighting's there. awesome. I love. Yeah, this I love. Sport. I'll do it all. All you know <laughs> until I'm forty. But you know, for me, for that though, that Grand Prix style tournament, for me to go in there, I felt like I kept my head down and just got it done. I'm used to that. I wrestled my whole life, and what I loved about it too is I'm not a shit talker, you know, and that's a new norm. And I like I like to watch that. Right. But to go in there and just go in there and let your skills do the talking, you you win, you move on. You win, you move on. You win, you move on, whatnot, until they give you the belt, your last man standing, and that's it. There's there's no politics about it. There's no BS of jockeying for a title shot or anything like that. So that's truly what I loved about it. Your skills, you know, went out there and represented. I like the format because it reminds me of like old school UFC, yeah. old school pride. It's like Same, a throwback, yeah. you know. Well, that, you can, that's what's really cool. And you can Tank look at it. it. You can look at. All right, I have an eight yeah. man bracket, and you, you see two. who's Fucking in there. Man. You know. <laughs> yeah. T- speaking of Tank Abbott, Tank Abbott, like the, those didn't work for him because he'd like knock someone's was, ass cold out th- and would be done after his second there fight with an, no energy. There was well, an he'd interview go have a with beer him. And come back. Yeah, there was an interview with him, and they were just like, "Did you train for this?" He's like, "Yeah, I went to a bunch of bars and got some fights." Yeah, he goes, "I just got off a bar stool two weeks ago, man." So. I know people have questions, and I actually have these questions too. Would be like, so what's the difference in you know? Because everybody knows like the Reebok deal with the UFC and the structure that they took as far as like owning that space is like a, an official sponsor, and then you have Bellator. And for me, as a huge fight fan, I, I I think that the fighters should come first. And I know that they're a business and their organization that revolves around making money. But like, what what are like kind of the differences in there? And, and not that one's better than the other, but you know, like. Yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the UFC or anything like that. You know, I I fought twenty fights there. I won the Ultimate Fighter. You know, I had a great time. Traveled the world, and fought well, the season, best the fighters. Show? Yeah, season eight, and nice. and uh, you know, traveled the world and had a great time. There came to a point, you know, where UFC was kind of changed as far as they brought Reebok in to be an official sponsor. That right. whole deal. You know, and I was doing well in sponsorships before, and at that point, in that point, in my career. As far as purses go, you know, we were we were fighting for okay money, you know, but that that sponsorship was a big part of it. And then, um, you know, they started to back off. Obviously, when the the Reebok deal came in, and if they can't be in the cage, they they can get a little bit on social media, and whatnot. But they they tend to pull away, and so you know that that was a that was a small decision when I when I left and went over to Bellator. Um, but coming over, I wanted to. I wanted to freshen up. I wanted to, you know, I was looking for a new contract, that that whole deal. 
Um, I met with the, the higher ups and they, they were asking me if I wanted to fight in Japan and, and, you know, rise in, if we do cross promotion, if I'd be open to fighting in heavyweight, Didn't, you know, did the, the UFC bought pride, right? And they, they dissolved did. it. Yeah. God, the pride days were fucking crazy, man. God, they so they bought, so good. they bought pride and strike force and strike force. Right. Who Scott Coker owned and now Scott Coker owns Bellator. Got owns it. Bellator. They bought everything but Bellator. Basically. Well, I think Bellator came up after Strike Force because Strike Force was number two, and then they bought them up like "fuck you guys, we're going to own the space." And then Bellator was just like, "Well, we're going to do this our own way." But yeah. yeah, so Scott's heading up Bellator. You know, they're owned by Viacom. Um, they're doing some fun things, different things. You know, they're uh, um, they're not a cookie cutter, you know, organization. They're not trying to copy the UFC. They're doing their own shit. You know, and, right. and uh, you know, UFC bought Pride, and those guys are doing the rise in now. You know they had their three year, you know, non compete, but now they're they're tr- they're starting to do their own thing. I have a super personal question, not personal question. No, just I just want to know when you go into a cage like in the, the octagon, is there some sense of relief that there are rules? Because I look back at the Pride days, right, Baker? You're a fan, Ross. I know you yeah. watch too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, soccer kicking people down when they're half TKO'd and their elbows and knees are down, and there's like, ha bam, like Brazilian six, soccer six, team bitches. Six points of contact, bro, and it's fucking, <laughs> right. it's like right brutal. Yeah. Like yeah. you end a career with one, one of those yeah. kicks. Like, yeah. is, is there some well, could sanctuary? They, not, they couldn't elbow or something in Pride, right? No, they could. I, th- the, I think like, there was there, no there was like some, back like, of the on heads. the ground. I don't think they could no, elbow they, or they, something. Uh, Pride was not elbow strikes. The, okay, it ground it was ground and pound, but with the fist only. And, but you could kick them. But you could kick them down. You could knee them to the. Yeah, that's yeah, all they they yeah. catch them. They'd break and then they would sh- yeah bop and kick them right in the fucking face. Like, but yeah, back in the, show gun oof, yeah, back in the old days of USC though, you could punch in the balls. Because oh yeah, there yeah. was that yeah. J- 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 Jute Kune Do. But that's back with no rules. I mean, that's like yeah, there's no I was ballet to do, which is anything goes yeah. in Portuguese. You know? But that was before there was even mixed martial arts. It was like Taekwondo versus karate versus wrestler versus Jiu Jitsu. Royce Grace. Everybody knows the so fucking great. story. So well, on that so whole great. thing though, it if there were soccer kicks or knees to the ground, knees to the ground would benefit me. You know, and yeah, so, how, you, so how, you train to you you train for those rules, and now they have. Which is kind of a weird deal. They have the the rule where if you have two, you know, one hand down. They used to have if you touch the ground, they were a downed opponent. You yeah. Know? Now it's two. Now hands. it has to be two hands, but it has to be, be supporting. supporting. Yeah. And so that's where you're getting. You see, Chris Weidman got exactly, fucked up exactly. because he was like hand down, yep. knee in the face. The ref was like, "You're good." Ate the most brutal because they they would play the uh, they play that game. Yeah. yeah. You know, they come in. The ref comes in the back, and we talk about it. You know, Before. beforehand. And so we're clear, you know, we're in Nevada, we're in California. They use the uh, unified rules. Right. So, you know, I've been in there 30 plus times, so I know those rules now. But That's um, crazy. So we, w- what is crazy too is when you're sparring, you know, you're not trying to fuck your sparring partner up and all that and so like i'm glad you said up you know yeah because when ross spars with me he tries to fuck me and then that's the only reason i'm tougher than him him sparring they're just hanging out in a bed just a couple couple gentlemen having a good time we might spar with banana hammocks shared a a semantic shared a cigar like uh, they turned that's a great idea for a skit two dudes one hammock yeah when when i hear two guys are in the pride I think it's gay pride, and then obviously Matt was talking about something else. So then we had to switch to wrestling, and I was like, "All right, I guess we'll do this." <laughs> there, so there's a part that, like, I think people don't understand about fighting, and I always like I'm just a huge fight fan. But we were talking earlier in the the car ride up to uh, what a, a fun day we had today, but about strategy. I don't mm-hmm. think people understand how much goes into the forethought of how to plan in a fight camp to actually fuck a dude up and actually realizing what they throw. And that was kind of what you're talking about with Fader was like the nuances. Okay, he wants when you shoot the uppercut and the hook yeah. and then working around those things. Are you cool speaking about Oh that? yeah, I mean for I mean in training camp too. I I try to pride myself on being over prepared. I never want to feel like I'm walking into that cage and I'm underprepared. Cause that's the worst feeling in the world. Cause you're not confident if, uh, if they're, you're in a position, it starts to get a little, you know, a little hairy, you know, you're like, do I, do I use my energy supplies right now? And all that. So I always try to over prepare on that aspect. And then with Fedor, we were, I mean, we were obviously watching tapes so with, with, with him. You gotta be either ready to get in that firefight. And we were at the beginning and kind of, um, you know, take his gas tank down a little bit. I thought right. it'd only benefit us. 
Um, but at the same time, he holds his hands really low, and you can't see his. He right shoots hand. that right hand from the fucking yeah, here. That's why it's he's dangerous. Like, right? It comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And but that's what he dropped. Uh, you know, Mitrion with that. He dropped. I mean, everybody with that because um, you can't see it right there. But at the same time, holding your hands down there, you're you're open, you're exposed, and so that whole time we were gonna try to read that distance and hope we could. And when I got in there, I was reading his body and his eyes and everything, and I could, I could read him. And I go, okay, I know when he's trying to throw this. I can, I can be at this weird. It's a weird distance in MMA. You get in there, and it's like a no man zone right there. And you, right. And then it's either you go here, engage, or you go Disengage. back out. Right. And so I knew if I played that that fine line, you could see him load up. Yeah, and- I can load. Okay, that's that line right there. Okay, now I'm gonna. You know, he, he's respecting my takedown ability and all that. And that's when I kind of, you know, I was like, I'm going to hit him with his left hook right now and put him out. And uh, I was feeling it out through a little jab, a little kind of a really easy kind of check hook to see where he, he was going to be at. And it was kind of what we were, you know, game planning and then ended up hitting him with that hook. But is it super rewarding when, you know, your fight camp and your coaches and everything come together? Like, because you were talking about that, like, okay, I'm going to do this kind of like jab. Mm-hmm. you know hook overhand and when you practice that because you were saying in the car and then like you just land it yeah or you're like fucking a i got the right coaches <laughs> no exactly and that's it what we're worked. doing the whole time it worked. <laughs> and in the back you know i'll i'll put out a video whatnot but of us constantly practicing that and and pushing him into that punch the whole time and then you know and i thought i was going to land it first round i thought i was going to get it done pretty quickly you know but you also got to be prepared to go to be in that cage for 20 minute, 29 minutes in there, you yeah. know, with the, the breaks and the rounds. Gross. Wow. Fighting one of the, the baddest dudes ever. It's, Jared, you know. Jared it's hard loved, for me to walk Jared, up yeah. one set of stairs. Jared loves yeah. cheeseburgers yeah. and he can't eat cheeseburgers for 29 minutes. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It, uh. it was a cool experience and it just it happened to work out. You know, it could have been a little different. I hit him on the top of the head and not flush right there and, and didn't put him away. And, and we had a a crazy fight for 25 minutes but um like you're saying it's nice when a plan comes together kick and ass got it done that's kind of yeah be- so hey right ryan how does it feel to be the double champ and everybody is out there asking for you to fight like john jones right now that, that's that's the scuttlebutt that everybody's been talking about is there a possibility of anything like that happening of you leaving bellator and going back to the ufc at all well i've heard john jones and daniel cormier because right both are in the weight classes like, same yeah so let's preempt are you more comfortable at two or five or heavyweight? I can go either. Like right now, I, I've I've fought three fights at heavyweight all these last yeah. three fights, and I felt good and I didn't have to cut weight. But I can easily go back to two hundred five. I would re- I would want to see you DC versus you at heavyweight. Would holy fuck I would oh, watch that yeah, yeah. Be because the in the dynamics of that, oh, it'd be so well, much. Well, fun. Hold on, let me ask Ryan, would you fight DC or Jones? Yeah, hundred percent. If it uh, not even there's no hesitation. No, yeah, I'm a competitor. I, you know, I feel like I'm the best in the world, and I need to go out there and prove it. So when I when go. I was that's in, what I'm talking yeah. about right there, oh, folks. The that's what I'm world talking world about. Hell yeah. yeah. So when Ow. I was in the UFC, I was I was younger. I felt like I hit it. I hit it my own stride. I always had the physical gifts and all that, but I I felt like back then I was missing that just that little bit of extra mental aspect, Salt Bay, which makes you be a champion. What you know? Yep. How Jones went out there and went on his run DC the whole time, and maybe I wasn't there yet, you know. And so everything when that caught up, my skills were there. Um, it just happened to be when I left the UFC, you know. So there's a, so I have a con- one fight left on my contract in Bellator. I love Bellator, having a great time, you know. Uh, I want to stay there, and I think they're gonna um, incentivize me to stay there. Uh, but there's always a possibility, you know. Well, they've signed some fucking brilliant fighters to 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 Bellator, which has been fun as a fan because you see these guys like, man, what's you know Rory McDonald's next fight? Mm-hmm. And they sign with Bellator, like, oh my god, this is going to be a fucking the, the landscape, a fucking war zone. It, it's changing in MMA. You know, it used to be like we wouldn't dare even talk about it in another right. organization, right? And then a uh, um, couple guys made the jump. Um, I was like, I'm going to fuck it. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to make the jump. And my whole, my whole thing was like, all right, I haven't fought anywhere else besides a couple fights at the beginning to get into right. the ultimate fighter and going to the UFC, uh, anywhere else, but UFC, and I just don't want it to be anything less of the, of the experience. And so 
Uh, my first fight was in Madison Square Garden. Fuck. You know, and everything was the same. It was for a title shot. I won the title. I was like, this is the biggest fight as I've ever had. You know, and so then to go from there, defend it, and then do uh, heavyweight Grand Prix. Yeah. You know, and so I never skipped a beat. And so I, I uh, bet on myself, came over, and, you know, obviously it was a great idea. Ross and I got blacked out drunk at Madison Square Garden for the uh, Conor McGregor. McGregor, yeah. <laughs> Eddie Alvarez fight. It was a fun time. Ross, it yeah, was. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a re- it's a really good time, and there's nothing like fighting in Madison Square Garden. Were you aware of the history and the aura behind it when you were in there? Like yeah. walking to the cage, are you like, holy shit, I'm fighting in, in MSG? No, it's kind of like the week before, you know, and uh, nostalgia of it. There's other other places where I've been because when I got tunnel vision, I'm walking out there, I'm worried about what I'm going to do, you yeah. know. Uh, I'm going over my game plan, you know, the first couple, you know, first twenty seconds of the fight. But I Baker, w- if you yawn again, I'm gonna come across this fucking thing while you text and slap you in the fucking face. Uh, and yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask Ryan how to fucking slap you really good in the face. I haven't yawned. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see the slaps. <laughs> I want to see it in slow mo because it'll make his face smush like a big baby. Yeah, it's already a big baby over there. We're up past Baker's bedtime. Yeah. Meanwhile, but, we have the double champ on the show. Yeah. Who and can you're get up fucking and rip your face off, hey, hindering, like trying to find hey, a girlfriend. I, Come on, bro. I Grinder. Up so late last night. I called Evan at two a.m. and didn't go to bed till four thirty. You were just asleep. I was not. We have been out <laughs> shooting guns. We've been angling. We've been today. having fun. And I'm trying I to like won the fist. I won the fist. Huh? You I won the fist. I technically beat Logan two of the events out of three. True. Logan only beat what do we one do? event. We tied? Uh, well, we don't want to give away who won the whole thing. But well, I, just, I, 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 I beat you in fishing. We tied everything else. Like identical ties. Really? So, Ross, we did a charity challenge today, which is a new thing on Black Rifle Coffee of what we've been doing. It's like a bunch of us competing against each other. Usually it's Team Evan versus Team Matt. That's usually, always what it is. And we, uh, we, we had, a, we had a, a good day. We went out and fished. We went out and shot fucking skeet. And then we shot beer cans. I think you tied fishing, too. No. Are you sure? You How caught many fish three you ca- fish. He caught three fish. Oh, I definitely caught three. No, no, yeah. during the tournament. Yeah, three. <laughs> yeah, he caught three. You caught three. We're all ties. I think all I caught. Yeah, you, got, I, you guys he, were all ties. Logan, Logan was late. on. I think you got three. I was at three or four. Because yeah. we got, I think, what, ten total. And then Lo- Logie caught two. So. I got well, five. But all, all I heard is about his shotgun abilities. And then I come out and tie him. Both yeah. rounds. Right. Well, oh, hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Who, Baker? Time out, mm-hmm. damn it. Right? See, yeah. that's what's up. Oh, bitch, you got something up your way. Else. Y'all were y'all were delivered clay pigeons on silver platters. I mine was like a like a like a techno Viking was working the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, yes, you got the harder the clay pigeons. But it was fun. But, I have no complaints. But the Logan shot I was missed, not a gentleman when he was the throwing shot I, mine. The shot I missed, the shot I missed. There's no excuse. There was no excuse because you were on like fucking fire for effect. You're like, tush, tush, nailing, nailing the hard ones. And then it was just like, like you got teed <laughs> up, line. bro. It was just like, here you go. Have a I nice one. I went, oh, to, my snap, Baker I went to snap my snap my shotgun into my shoulder and it called on my damn my, my life preserver. Yeah, you yeah. were you were and wearing I a life vest. I was a wearing life a life vest. But that's what I feel like Ryan and I have in common here. I'm the double champ today too because I'm the Ooh. only person that not did not miss one clay pigeon. Just, I'm wow. just fucking putting it out there. And, and, and look at you, you, you double champ. That in. Hey, you know why didn't you come in clutch at the end too? Y- yeah, you know maybe maybe wait a minute. Hold maybe on. shot maybe Matt shot two beer cans with one fucking load. He did Just that. Did. He did. He <laughs> did. One load. Fuck that was luck. It. That was luck of the draw. It is not luck of the draw. Now, no. Yes, it was because if you get them close enough, that's luck of the draw. But there's three it's cans. Def- I have to make the cognitive decision to go. I'm that's the saying, one I'm going. That is I drop it a little low so the water skips up and hits. That is the fuck definition of luck of the draw. I was to get the two cans close enough to shoot it with one. Shot. I was, that's luck of the job. I was shocked you didn't get all three with one shot. They, that that, you, you that was a tight flock. You flock shot that, that thing. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> he, he still won, though. I got all still three. Yeah. It's okay. We got it. It doesn't matter how you win. You just fat And you I won. used a pump. <laughs> oh, Jared. No, nobody wants to hear that. By, by the way, for the audience. With a 20 uh, round mag. So, hey, Ryan, for yeah. the audience, can you tell everybody your military backgrounds so to how you know all these, these dipshits over there? I have no military background, actually. Oh, um, look, Ross is Wikipedia. Started, yeah, what the was fuck wrong. was that? Your Wikipedia is <laughs> wrong, wrong, jackass. I will tell I, you. I want to know how, how did you end up with black rifle coffee on your pants if you weren't in the military? Because I, 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 Matt's been posting about you for a long time. No, so we, so I've always been uh, a black rifle fan, and then uh, we just got my people got with their people, 
And that was pretty much it. So pretty much really? what, what Ryan's trying to say is he cares about veterans unlike you, Ross. And <laughs> who's, you know, who's, yeah, just trying to he's, mook he's, around he's with don- him. He's donated an entire purse, if I believe, to uh, charity. The he worked for the, the fucking, you know, you know, shit you wouldn't do, Ross. I uh, know. I, look, we do it all the time. <laughs> who's the celebrity that's always in your corner as well, Ryan? Mm, I think you're uh, the Wikipedia's got you a little bit. Yeah, I, think it's, it's, I yeah, told you he's yeah. gonna Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, it's not at all. There's there's always somebody famous with you. Who is it? Who's your trainer? Uh Jair. It's Br- Jair Grigel, Brazilian dude. He's not famous he's, though. Oh, well, he, he's no. kind of famous. He trains a lot of people, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, all those guys. I mean, I have a high level coach for sure. No, hundred percent. But there, there's, so, not a, there's not a, a, a famous dude rolling around with us. It's just us, the team. Uh, fucking Ross. Yeah, you know, that's like, it. Isn't that I've had Chris the same Pratt on the fence? <laughs> hey, Chris, Chris, hey, Chris Pratt. Pratt was there. Was oh, funny. he was? Yeah. There we go, finally. <laughs> Jesus but Christ, he's, he's not rolling around with me. This one. <laughs> what was funny, Chris though, I, after that fight. photo you've been in, Chris Pratt's. Chris Pratt's yeah. been there. After that <laughs> fight, though, um, one of my buddies said, you know that gif from, like, Parks and Rec of, Chris Pratt in yeah. face. It's like yep. a surprise face. Yep. He's somebody sent me that, didn't know it was like, holy shit, dude, you did it, whatever. When I no first, way. when I first knocked out Fedor, I ran and jumped on the the cage, whatever, and I looked down and Chris Pratt was doing that face. I was looking, <laughs> right, looking right at me, you know, and I saw my buddy after that and then I was looking for my family and shit, but it was kind of funny. But that maybe that's who you're talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That so that, that right photo there. is yes. So that, that photo is going around the world, and everybody's like, "Holy shit!" Chris Pratt's best friend just won another title, and that literally that photo's gone everywhere. No shit. Well, listen, that? we will invite. I, I don't know him at all, but hell, Chris Pratt's a cool motherfucker. I think we should go like hunt or do some man shit all together. We'll try and get him when we do our LA shows. Yeah, yeah. Maybe do some yeah. Uh, sparring. Yeah, some, some sparring. Yeah, with the finger, some of your version finger. of sparring. Yeah, because so, everybody, everybody who's written in the show is like, dude, ask him about his relationship with Chris Pratt. That photo is everywhere, by the way. I mean, literally what, everywhere. What Can photo, we see though? that picture? Can you type his name and Chris Pratt it's and the see gift. if it comes up? No. He's, yes, yeah, I don't even know if I have a photo with him. Yeah. But no, he's wa- he's just watching you, right? Like he was at the fight. Or yeah, something. yeah, he he's was at the fight. Yo, yes. yeah, find me that so, one. Hey, that, Dave, look up Chris Pratt watching Bellator um, Fader versus Ryan Bader. Yeah, because I did jump on the cage right there, and I just kind of, you know, he was right cage side as the first person I saw. Yeah, so that that photo was everywhere, and everybody assumed, like, oh, my God, Chris Pratt loves veterans. He must have came there to watch you and all this other stuff, and that that was the first photo I saw of you guys, and I was like, holy shit. Ty- type in his name. Crazy. Yeah, Fader and Ryan Bader. It's almost like a rap song. So Fader that's his buddy Ryan right Bader. there, the guy who was a... Uh... Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Oh, Wikipedia. I think uh, I think Ross is just wrong in all this. No, it's it's Dave on that one. So the Chris Pratt photo has been uh, like that. That that's the one that's been going around. To be is honest, yeah, I haven't you? seen it. Well, I haven't seen it. Yeah, here we I, are, just drinking and getting either false way. So, hey, fake news. Yeah, we, fake we, we news, some, Ross. We, we, exactly. We got some questions for the fans, uh, and we'll ask we'll ask everybody on the panel for this. So from Drinking Bros Sports, what is your favorite fight movie? Ooh, fight movie. Of all time. Dun, 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 dun. You know what we watched? Uh, it was on actually two days before the fight is Roadhouse. Uh, <laughs> Zach oh, I love Such Roadhouse. A great movie. Okay. Yeah, so that's always a fun one. Not I'm not best. How about yours? Me? Yep. Fight. Oh, shit. Uh, you got to go like Rocky or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to watch like the fake. Uh, you yeah. know, Creed was a decent movie. Rocky, uh, man. Yeah. Rocky. I've got, I've got a good one. I've got, I got a zinger. Three Ninjas Kickback. Oh, oh Teenage yes. Mutant Ninja Turtles is probably my favorite fight movies. <laughs> Predator. <laughs> well, Count Three Ninjas. Fish. I'm going with Three Ninjas, Ross. Rocky mm. 2. Yeah. Rocky, the second I, Rocky. I go Rocky 4, Baker. I'm proud of you for that one. I got to ask uh, this one because it's been posted like 17 times. It's immature question. It's silly, but apparently the Drinking shoot. Bros want to know. Has there ever been in a fucking time in your MMA career where there's well, obviously because I had I rolled five times and had junk in my face where you're mm-hmm. like there's just like the balls in your face you're like Jesus Christ get these yeah, things oh, out I, of my yeah. face I mean I've wrestled my whole life too you know and we had yep. uh, we had a guy that uh, was a heavyweight that came to Velasquez he used to just murder every day as you know his training partner yeah but um, 
he wore no underwear, oh. athletic, oh, you know, God. wrestling shorts. Yeah. The big old hog on him. Oh, so you God. shoot kind of like a, you know, a high crotch, and it's like kind of on your shoulder, just hanging out. <laughs> oh, but in no. MMA, yeah, I mean. That like dong, I've, dong, dong, dong. I've had like, oh, oh, shit, exactly. Dude. I mean, you get in uh, the worst is their shirt, like their shirts in your mouth, and he, he, you know, they move and it gets wrung out in your mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. God. Yeah, you get used to like being in, you've been in there, like in guard, and you're waiting for like the round to start, and you're like, in it's super back, like all right, legs well, it's always the trainer them. it's like all right let's go and yeah. you get him in there and you're like it's just a dude like fucking you mish style you yeah know? and you're like and you're waiting for the round to go so you're just Bing! like hanging okay. out there all right i guess i'm cool with this apparently it's it's because i'm a man yeah <laughs> yeah uh hey uh, favorite hype song that's the next question what's what's what, what's the song you you listen to before i don't have in one in particular um but in the back is kind of like a tradition we'll just put on like pandora classic rock I'll ask and, you, you this. You know, and just let it roll, and then we'll go. <laughs> For your final Bellator fight, can we can we talk you into using Bitch I Operate? Oh, what what is it? We should we should we should sort that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk yes. about that All offline. Right. All right. If you came out to one of my songs, I don't know what I would I would. You got to roll out there too. Oh, are you yeah. fucking about kidding a, me? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll do it like I'm wake coming. up in the morning and I'm talking. Yeah, dude, I'll fucking yeah. dude. I'm ready. Oh, oh, hold on. If we use that, I got, you guys got to come out. Yes, now. Yeah. Man. I'm there. Man, we're doing. Are you it. kidding me? Oh, Bell- Bellator loves that shit. Yes. They'll be all over. Are you it. kidding me? Oh, that yeah. would be. The, we'll, we'll rally the dream. I'll be so, fucking story. So, uh, that would be the greatest moment of my life if I get yes. to fucking be a walk rap artist <laughs> at a fucking and, name and, of it. And your rap song is playing for his walkout, and we're yeah. behind. And him. I'll mix the lyrics up like "fuck you, J Biebs." Like, hey, what's up, dude? But, yeah, yeah, let's redo. Done. Let's redo the lyrics for the for the done fight deal. itself. Oh, dude, I'll write it all about Bader. We got let's that. Do all day. Let's so do the, it. So the guy that fought before me, uh, Jack Swagger. Is, you know, w, I don't watch really watch WWE, but Jack Swagger. I don't uh, know. We don't you nobody, guys, no, okay. no, no, come on. And so I didn't really know, but he We're had a guy come operas. out and kind of, you know, kind of do that himself. He's like in a red jumpsuit, whatever, rapping. But so, okay, one hundred percent, they love it. I'm down. Yeah. I'll yeah. do whatever. Yeah. We're in your last but fight for Bellator. Would you would you, would so you walk him out as a hype man, like with a mic in hand, like rapping, Are leading him? Would they let me? Would they let him do that? Yeah, a live I'm walk out. So like UFC, no shot. Yeah, Bellator loves like. Theatrics, oh, like the Japanese yeah. pride style. Me? You have to would I walk out as a hype man you with, a mic singing, with a mic rapping? They could, his whole camp can pick my fucking attire. I'll come out like looking like Fifty Cent or fucking. I'll come out in a fucking cut off flannel, man. Like I am the I Folgers am, motherfucker. I am dude. Blushing right now, dude. I'm are so you kidding me? Hey, that, that's a great <laughs> idea. We can I, mix I it up all a little fucking bit. Day. Yeah. yeah, all day. This so is actually the yeah, lead singer of Lincoln's box, box seats. Lincoln's box seats, <laughs> bitch. That's a really good uh, question. I, uh, not to take off that, but um, I'm so excited. Ja- for this. Jacob asked about competitiveness in the weight classes. Do you think that there's a certain weight class that is the most competitive? Because in in my perspective and lens would be that there's a lot more the, the lighter guys are hyper technical and they yeah. move super fast, which presents its own challenges. But then heavyweights, it's like you make one fucking mistake. Good night. Yeah, you can get, you, but like, is there a class you think is the no, most competitive? No, you're, you're totally right. I think uh, the lighter weights are like at 155, right? You have ten killers that could just rotate and beat each other all the time. Um, but at the same time, at heavyweight and light heavyweight, 185, you have the big guys in small gloves knock each other out. Um, but I do feel like the heavyweight division historically has been weak beyond like five, like the top five. Right. You know, you'll have you'll have three, four, five just killers in that weight division and then all of a sudden it drops off pretty significantly. Yeah, right. they could win. Yeah, they have power, whatever, but like the skilled guys are right there. It's kind of like you know, like uh don't sound weird saying it, but like women's MMA. Right. You have amazing champions, amazing top three. Amanda but Nunez. The, but Jesus the depth, Christ, what a fucking boss-ass yeah, bitch, dude. Crazy, right? Yeah, but the, 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 the talent yeah, drop-off. But, but it, the drop-off is significant. Like, you'll have somebody ranked seventh in the world in the UFC, and they're like five and five. Right. You know? But um, And I feel like at heavyweight, sometimes it could be really strong, or it could be you have three amazing world-class fighters, and it kind of drops off a little bit. You know? And I feel like... 205 pound division right now in the UFC is kind of like that okay 
Which is crazy because you're, are you still friends with Cain Velasquez? Yeah. Man, I'm a huge fucking fan of that dude. And he's taken the stint off maybe because DC held the heavyweight championship. But he's coming back to fight uh, Francis Ngandu. Yep. Holy so fucking So Cain was hurt. He had shit. surgery on his back for a little bit. And then, uh, you know, he kind of knew his worth and wasn't, I think, and this could kind of hearsay, but um, kind of knew his worth and knew what he wanted to get and whatnot. And uh, held out a little bit, but I feel like he's the best fighter on the planet. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Francis Nagando and him, that's a fireworks yeah. show. I'm excited. That could go, you know, Kane's smart about it. He's not going to get a slugfest with him. He's going to go in there, right. put the pressure, take him down. Well, look at in the sense up, of, but... like, Dos Anjos' success, that first fight that they got, like, got rocked, put away. And then Kane was like, I'm coming back, motherfucker. And then that performance he put on in their mm. second fight was just fucking brilliant. Kane's one of those so. dudes that, yeah. He he, I think he's the top guy. What are you saying, ooh about the? What uh, you got? I liked I liked his. How hard was it to pick up striking after so many years of competitive wrestling? Oh, All right. that's a, that is a good one. <laughs> uh, fuck, man! I'm, I remember being in uh, in huge fights in UFC. Had no i no idea what the fuck I was doing on the feet. Hundred percent. Like I, when I fought Machida, I went in there and yeah, I was like. I can hit hard, whatever, but I didn't even have a jab. Like, I, I couldn't set anything up. I was like, if we throw, I'll throw two and see what happens. I knew it hit hard. And I, and I had my wrestling, but um, it wasn't until, like, a little before the Rashad fight where it kind of slowed down. I had a jab. I kind of knew what I was doing, you know. And so I've always had all the other shit. But for that to catch up and my mentality to catch up, the mental aspect, I think that's what's really – kind of propelling me now but yeah fuck it, it took forever i remember trying to learn a left hook in the gym because i hadn't thrown a, a punch in yeah. before i was 23 <laughs> you know besides like yeah. a, a bar fight and you know what is that so yeah that was the hardest uh the hardest part there's got to be stories at least something from arizona state right and i just saw a picture oh, yeah. Fuck, you had some killers. Cain Velasquez and this group of just, like, guys that have gone on to have massive success in MMA. But, like, Arizona State, right? That is known as, like, the party. <laughs> All right. Yeah. right there. I would not. I would, yes. I would have. You, you, can, you can pull up, pull oh, up uh, Bader and CB Dalloway, Care Bears. Oh, shit. All right. So we were all, we went out on a Halloween, whatever. Big old block party in Scottsdale. Cain was there for a little while. Um, walking back, and I'm not one to like. I'm not ever talking. Sh- there it is on the top, top right there, one, top, top left. left. I'm the yellow oh, guy, yeah. sunshine. Bear. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> so we went out like that. That's hilarious. You know, wrestlers. And That's ASU. a lot of paint, man. There's a lot of paint. So we go out. We have a good time. <laughs> We're leaving, and my buddy CV, he's uh, um, could be socially awkward at times. You know, a good dude, but we were uh, walking back and. He was talking to a girl, and all of a sudden, this like frat bus unloads, and this guy comes up and looks at both of us, leg kicks CB, and they start fighting. Cops come, they tell they tell me to leave. I go around the corner, I come back to see where he's going, you know, get, going to jail, whatever. They arrest him and I, looking like that. There's a mugshot. You got arrested. I got arrested. There's a Holy mugshot shit. somewhere out there of us. Put looking Ryan like Bader that. mugshot. I gotta see this. If it's in no, that. I don't know if it's on the internet here. We got to find it, but uh, uh, hey, Ryan, I, I figured out the Chris Pat rumor. By the way, yeah, what was, was that actually there to see somebody on the undercard who had never fought before? But because you were the double champion, they posted a picture of you and him, like he was there to see you. Ah, Welcome gotcha, to gotcha. Hollywood, baby. That's show business. That's show business, baby. Show business, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question for you. Um, how many pro fights have you had in UFC and Bellator combined? I think I'm uh, like 33, 34. Uh, what is your uh, greatest, looking back, mm-hmm. what victory are you most proud of? And then is there any losses or a loss or performance that haunts you that just you can't shake? Uh, so, I mean, you really can't top the, uh, I don't think you're going to find that. that uh, he's that gonna, he's God, going man. to mug shots. Someone, someone will find it. Someone <laughs> you got to find, find it, it though. Dave, fucking but, Dave. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you can't beat Fedor. Fedor is one of my favorite fighters of all. You know, and then to, so your to most recent fight out. is 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 the one yeah. you're putting up there. Okay, and That's then cool. uh, Rampage in Japan. You know, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was a younger kid coming up, and, and it's you fucking know, Rampage Jackson, Rampage. Dude. 
UFC Woo! champion. Do do it in Japan too. We we yeah. fought at ten a.m. I, I sent a ten a.m. Ten a.m. Phoenix. God cop. dang! What time you get up? I, I just five thirty a.m. We'll <laughs> see if we can get this thing. I sent a Phoenix cop. Uh, he's also was, I got arrested in uh, Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Find it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll so. find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so ten. Uh, we left at five thirty a.m. I brought some like oatmeal. Ate it in the back, and then went out there and fought Rampage at 10 a.m. in Japan, Tokyo, Japan. Was the lead up to Fader any different? Because he's like, he's got this fucking aura about him. He's not a shit talker. Yeah. He's always like well spoken and very killer. reserved. And yeah. he just like, uh, you know, barely talks in media. You you heart, you just like out of fight and you know fucking yeah. kill people. Like fuck, man. Is it was there was there like a aura about that dude, or was it just like here's he's a man, I'm a man, let's fucking party. There, there definitely was, but I tried to keep that out of my head, and I tried to, like you were saying, I tried to check myself and say, "All right, you're fighting this guy, you know, January 26th. Doesn't matter if it's Fedor. Doesn't matter, you know, he can't bring his past wins. I can't either. He can't bring his belts in. I like that. It's, it's him and I at that moment in time, and that's it. And I knew, like I said, going back to like, I knew I prepared and and did everything I had to do." to allow myself to be successful in that cage. And so, like, what else is there to do? So I kept going back to that. But I did get to the arena, just got to the arena, and I was, like, looking around. All of a sudden, there's, like, 20 people, like, cameras and all this shit, you know, in my locker room. Right. I watched Fedor come in, and I, like, realized, like, in the magnitude. and This is a huge fucking fight. Huge fight. Yeah. Heavyweight championship of the world. Um, you know, I've, I have the light heavyweight belt. You know, but this is my time, and and if there was ever an opportunity to seize, it's right now. And <laughs> I felt myself kind of getting in that moment and kind of going like, "Oh fuck!" That's but, when like Eminem, dun 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 dun, dun exactly. mom spaghetti, bro. <laughs> so I had to check myself right then and be like, "All right, we're good. You trained your ass off. You're ready for him right now. Who cares if it's Fedor? Who cares? You've been in there with the, the legends in MMA. Yeah, fuck it, let's go." And kaboom! <laughs> and it happened, yeah, exactly. When it happened cool. that quick, and yeah, then what that. about a what about a loss that sticks with you? Ah, uh, that would be Tito Ortiz. What? Yeah. So uh, back in the day, Tito. Oh, the old Tito. Yeah, who wants to get beat God, by him? You know. Yeah. And because uh, like if you no, I know mean, he's a little older. It's super rude, you know. But you and Tito get in a cage right now. I feel like you would you would rip his head destroy off. Destroy him. Yeah. I feel the same. But if yeah. they, I can do. I can beat Fedor. I can go win the light heavyweight and heavyweight championship of the world. So but why does Tito stick? But with you? people, they go, yeah, you're pretty good, but you fucking lost to Tito. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's they always have that like, uh, yeah, but that did, ace, you know. Did but. you did you lose to Tito when he was on his hot streak? No, because there was a time there, <laughs> absolutely, when Tito not. was like a world beater. But then what, once once the the coach cracked, it's like, well, no, he was, gonna... and once Liddell fucked him up, he kind of was it, back and forth with it's everything. MMA, right? It's crazy, it's crazy fucking sport. How, We're all how did big you lose guys. that fight? I, and so I I I was it's probably eight fucking eight years ago or something, and so I just lost the only time I've lost two in a row. I lost to John Jones. John Jones, that's right. Went yep. on to people didn't really know how good he was, and and at that point. I had no fucking idea what I was doing. He goes and beats Shogun for the title. I fight Tito Ortiz. Was Shogun right after you? Right after. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so I fight Tito. I go out there. He catches me with like a weird punch. And I woke up kind of in a choke. And then he's strong. He is strong as fuck. And he choked. He was choking the shit out of me and tapped. And that was it. Shit. And I was like, and that, so that in my career, that was a. The moment where it was like right because you like, like you lose to down. Jones, you're like okay, I get it. You know he's got a couple of picograms yeah. helping him out. I'm kidding, joke, haha. But then like yeah, Tito Ortiz, you're like oof, that's a rough one for me. Yeah, yeah. Right. and then at that time too, he was on a good losing streak, and it was kind of one of those things. But uh, it, so you brought what, his career back for him? 100, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he, he got him another fight. It, it <laughs> got him another fight, and he went on and did his thing. You know, but um. You know, it is what it is. It's MMA. And from that, you can either go one of two ways. You can say, ah, oh, fucking let it get you in a little deep hole. Or you figure it out. And well, I think you what figured was it I out, doing Ryan. wrong? I think you, know? you figured it out. <laughs> and so, Who do you hope to fight next, Ryan? Man, there's been a lot of different names thrown at me. They're, uh, well, how about this first? Do you want to do it at light heavyweight or heavyweight? So that's the thing, too. Um, if they want... My contract, you know, I'm here at light heavyweight. If yeah. it, 
And we were, we were kind of talking about doing a new deal, this and that. And if they want me to fight at heavyweight and stay at heavyweight, I got to be incentivized to do that. And I'd love to do a new deal and get right. it going and be happy. And, um, you know, I know where we need to be, where I, I'll do whatever you want. Right. I'll fight at heavyweight and go back down to light heavyweight, whatever. But um, for me, there, there, there are two guys at heavyweight that they, that they fight. There's a clear-cut winner. It's uh, Congo and Minikoff, the yeah. Russian. Okay. Yeah. You know, and Minikoff had that title before. That's why this vacant title was there. Right. Because they stripped him when he left, or I don't know the whole the whole deal. But um, and then at two hundred five, I don't feel like there's a clear cut contender that has a big name. You know, and to I like, got yeah, bring the you know, and, the and I got asked you know worthy. a couple a couple uh, different names like Tito, like Chell Sonnen. You know, and I told him if if they can just if Bellator can justify putting them into a title you, shot, I'm all for it. You and Chell Sonnen would be an interesting fight. Both wrestlers that can throw down. Yeah. Tito, that would be kind of cool for you. I like, come back. There's and a storyline there. Clean you know, storyline there. Clean that slate. I got a, I got a, I got a question. Um, if you could go back in time and fight any MMA fighter at their prime, I like that. And you at your prime, who would it be? Baker Levitt's right here, right now. Okay. That, in, that was mine. I'm in the moment. <laughs> any MMA fighter at their prime, at their peak, and you at your peak. I think I think it would have to be Fedor. I mean, that's a guy that when we were watching that, I was like, "Holy shit, this dude!" So you would want to fight Fedor at his peak? Well, that is it. That this man I, came into this building with a set of balls in a wheelbarrow. Well, what, <laughs> what am I doing in this sport if I don't want to? No, and and here's why. Here's why the, that answer impresses best me. Time. You said your greatest victory was was Fedor. Yeah, I, w- I want to say the, greatest, like or the most memorable. My mem- yeah, the, my most memorable and, and most my, recent. True, <laughs> but I, I think that no, that says a lot. That that speaks volumes about your character, in my opinion. That that was a really good answer. Aside from Fedor, who would it be? Hmm, uh, I'd probably say Shogun. Shogun okay. was one of those guys where yeah, I've always yeah. He was always on my radar, and I, I figured. And there's but there were times when we talked with the UFC and whatnot. There, it was almost there, kind of uh, like it yeah. could be Shogun next. It could be you know this fighter, but he he's a guy like I watched in. It, you know, in Pride, when Fedor was fighting, like two baddest dudes in MMA, you know, and so when he came over, um, but shit too. Just thinking about that right now too. You have Chuck Liddell when he was yeah, in his yeah, right? yeah. and I w- so I might change that to him because when I was coming up and I was wrestling, he that was, was the a dude, man. man. He was that a was man. The dude. He dude, he was on a streak there, man. Just Which was dropping, like, dude. Yeah. It was super hard for me to watch Tito versus Liddell, and I know the promotion. They said the fight was going to happen. We thought we'd do it in California and make it the most safe for the fighters, but it was hard for me to watch because you're like, dude, Chuck, you're a fucking living legend. Like everybody loves you. Preserve Don't what you go got out like left, that. yeah, buddy. Like fuck, man. And he's from that slow. That payday, just, Matt. That payday, though. I you know? actually no, I don't think it's the payday, bro. I think that he just misses it. He, it's it's chasing the dragon. It's why people stay in service I for think so long. So too. It's, I think the dude has had acting opportunities. The UFC has given him opportunities as far as an influencer and promoter. I think that m- the majority of that, uh, um, the want for him to fight again was because he was chasing the dragon. He just want to get back in there. And he prove wanted a point. to clean his mental palate, and that's what Tito did too. Tito was like. Well, I'm just gonna fucking punch face and finally get that win over Chuck Liddell. You're yeah. like, bitch, he beat you it's three time times, right now, yeah. man. You know, so no, I agree with you. There's uh, a, there's there's a time when, and you guys obviously know this, where like you miss that even the week of, it, as much as you hate it and you go through all this emotions and shit like that. Like at the end, when you look back, you're like, man, I was alive, and yeah, like, you're alive. Everything's that much sweeter. Yeah. You know, the day after the fight, because all you're thinking about, you're getting in a, a cage with this guy. I might get physically fucked up i might you know i might it's, lose yeah. like i might get knocked out i might get embarrassed in front of my whole friends and family and then when you're successful or even if you're not you look back you're like man that was a fun training Fucking camp fun, fun week and so when that's out of your life frank i will take some whiskey buddy i got a question come on i like asking you questions so yeah, babe, for babe, the babe, drinking babe, bros right now to raise your hands like frank's like coming in thank school. you you, know? so, you can hang out buddy so uh that's With regards to like the evolution of the sport, all right, because we talked earlier today, and I was talking about how when I was in college, we were watching you know like UFC two on VHS, and a lot has changed. Mm-hmm. Um, what would happen 
if you went into the octagon and fought someone and they had on a gi? So I look back to one fight in particular, not even a gi, like... Gracie? I look, Is it Hoist Gracie? Yeah, yeah. Ho- Hoist Gracie well, and do you know, Matt Hughes. That's, like, that's why Hoist Gracie... Royce, however you want to say it. Hoist, Hoist. Gracie wore the gi when he watched his interviews he goes i wanted people to latch on to me and try to take me down and that was the whole reason in in the beginning ufc won he wore the gi because he wanted people to like grab a hold of him and then he just do what you know the gracies do pull their ponytail whatever yeah had to sorry do. to interrupt but that no, was yeah. fascinating because yeah, yeah. i'm like why the fuck are you wearing a gi and a i want him on my, i want him on my body I and you remember his striking? He used to just kind of do almost two knuckles yeah yeah, yeah. he'd punch like this with he'd two chi- knuckles he'd chicken knuckle and kick, kick. He'd knuckle chicken kick. kick at you yeah yeah but then he'd go beat these even wrestlers too. Then, but you, we had no idea what the fuck that was, and that's when Brazilian Jiu Jitsu exploded, right? Yeah. And they went in there to prove, and they had they had better physical specimen fighters in their family that could go out there. But but Hoist Hickson, was a, Hickson, Hickson, yeah, Hickson's Hicks, Hickson's the guy that I think they let us down by not letting him do the things that they wanted to prove a point though. They right. put him put Hoist out there because he was kind of baby face. He was smaller, unassuming, but then he went and beat Hick- everybody. Hickson was the motherfucker. Yeah, right? Hickson motherfucker. of all the Gracies, Hickson was the the the, the that alpha. whole family yeah. and that lineage lineage of jiu jitsu, it's like Next it's level. Insane. You see, you yeah. see guys like the uh, Brian Ortegas that have come out yeah, exactly. from from training with them. There's like there's black belts, and then there's like black belts, oh, yeah. and like Brian Ortega. That guy is just fucking T City, dude. I'm a huge fan. I mean, there's different. And, and, and it's a thumbs up to Max Holloway after he beat Brian's ass. But I, I would love to fucking. And this sport's gonna evolve like Ortega. that. Do you see those Badass. Max Holloway? Yeah. You know Brian Ortega. But you see I they come in with striking. They're yeah. all like it's crazy that. They, they, well, I grew up football, baseball, traditional sports. Because you're a goddamn American. Exactly. Love it. Exactly. That's all I have to say. No, He's but then a Care so Bear. These <laughs> Care Bear. So these uh, bear. younger yeah. guys are coming in and they're uh, they're doing everything. They're everything, striking every at five years old. They're doing jujitsu. They're wrestling. You know, and they put it together by the time time they're eighteen. Yeah, they're going to be scary, scary dudes. You know, and so the. My turning point, going back to what I was saying about Matt Hughes and Gracie, like watching that, I forget what fight, when they fought again, or I don't know if they fought the first time, whatever, too much Jameson, but when <laughs> That's they- That's what we do with Black Rifle. If you, I just got poured up with some more Jameson. So for a little tipsy, fuck you, we're having a good time, guys. When they fought, <laughs> when they fought, and then Matt Hughes, you know, obviously knows enough jujitsu, and, and it was it was beyond just knowing one, you know- Oh, I know wrestling. I know boxing. I know jujitsu. Whatever. It, you know everything. You you know enough to not get caught in submissions. Right. And Matt Hughes went out there and you know got uh, two hooks in, flattened them out, and beat them up. That was kind of the turning point. Was like, all right, now everybody. I I saw that. We're like, it's going to change the game a little bit. Everybody's right. going to come in with the the knowledge to right. stay out of submissions to do you know do that defend and do, yeah. do strength and, and power now like how many. How many submissions do you see compared to back in the day? And I might be I may True. be wrong, right? But I think you still see a lot of submissions, but yeah, the game plan's significantly different. And I think yeah. that that's something that will probably be why your success was in the fader fight is like people can't go in this in a singular perspective as far as like, okay, no one wants to fucking fist fight with Fader. Yeah. That dude throws fucking bombs. But what we're gonna do is change levels mm-hmm. and we're gonna fucking fake the takedown and we're gonna throw a weird ass fucking punch. Exactly. And it's like that's why fa- fighting's so fascinating to me because you can you can train so much and learn the technicalities and then all of that jazz, but you can't train for fucking feints and what yeah. these guys are throwing at you because you can do all this shit. And I think that's what you're really seeing is like technical fighters that are learning how to like, you know, use one discipline and then they adjust it during the fight. I think jo- well, you, John you gotta Jones be so weird. Great you got to be weird yeah. in there too. The, you, I mean, I'm not the most technical striker if you looked at me, but if I can trick you or think – yeah. Make you think of doing something else and hit you in the face pretty damn hard. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going to do. We've well, done that in your fights, though, because you'll throw like a one, two or whatever, and you'll stick people. And if you get, end up getting caught, you'll just fake that shot, double leg. Let's party yeah. down on the fucking ass, dude. That's not fun for it, anybody. It's interesting. You were talking about, uh, you know, being well-rounded and stuff. And then uh, I think Matt brought up submissions. But when's the last time somebody got armbarred? 
early days of UFC? No, it's happened. Arm it happens arm. all the time. But yeah, I, I, I don't. But not, but not like it used to. So, no, I'm, I'm with you. I yeah, don't think. And I may be wrong, but I don't think it's because people know enough defense to stay out of trouble. Yeah. So like, what what are the what, like? There's so, submissions but, that are you never but a this leg is, lock. But, those don't happen anymore. But this is the future, yeah. right? I don't think general jujitsu is necessarily the future. I think that that component has translated to a good defensive posture. I have to defend, get to where I'm comfortable, and strike. But then you see guys like uh, DJ who just went to uh, one yeah. uh, w- one championship but like the first time I think he fought was at Henry Singundo he did like some weird body throw caught him in the air into a fucking general arm bar basic 101 white belt jiu jitsu arm bar but the way that he threw him caught him in this fuck you would never in your wildest dreams think that when you're getting tossed in the air and you're like okay let me find the mat he's trapping your arm and going to choke you like what the fuck? Yeah, so it's like the applications <laughs> in these like really, really brilliant manner. And the more money that's invested in MMA as far as sponsorships and, and promotions, all that does is create higher levels of fighters. What happened to boxing back in like the 90s because they're making so much fucking money. They're like, let's 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 do it. You're, you get money breeds epicness because people want to participate because there's a payday. And I think that's what's happening in MMA. We're like, mm-hmm. you, to your point, Ryan, was like people are coming up now that are five that are better boxers than I am. And you see these kids fucking hitting mitts and they're doing takedowns. Like, Jesus, I don't want to see this fucking kid when he's 21 years yeah, old. It'd be nasty. The fucking gorilla, dude. <laughs> and you look at jujitsu too. They just look at, uh, what was the fight? Ryan Hall and BJ Penn. Yeah. You know, you have guys coming up and specializing in jujitsu and competing jujitsu at the highest level. And they're doing crazy shit that the Gracie's and all that, you know, that, they weren't doing back then. It's evolving. It's and evolving. Then, it's Tetris. It's body Tetris, which is crazy yep. because you learn how to get one of the sides and you have that motherfucker that can get all of it blindfolded in one. You're like, I'm not going to play Tetris with that guy. No. Yeah, and then, keep, then when they start throwing some, punches, you're like, fuck it, this I think shit. it, um, w- in the lighter weight classes, I think it, it keeps everybody as honest as they could possibly be. Heavyweights, like we were saying, what's the guy's name that said, my balls are sweaty? Oh, uh, that's funny. Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis, yeah. Got Derek his Lewis, ass yeah. whooped for the entire fight. Last 10 seconds. That dude, for some reason, decides he's going to lead in with 10 seconds left. If the fight is over, yeah. he's won. Leads in with his head, gets knocked out. But I think the, the lighter guys, like I think with the BJJ, uh, the, the jiu-jitsu stuff, it, um, it makes everyone have to be honest and well-rounded. Well, yeah, I, I think they're more technically... They're they're more technical in every aspect. The lighter guys, you know, yeah. you as you have to be, you know, because even in cardio, if you're looking, they can go forever. You know, bodies are smaller, whatever. But technically, looking at them, little light bitches, <laughs> little light ass. You got the, the same ground. size lungs and smaller body, but bitch. at the same time, that's why you're seeing the, I don't know the the you know the. The lightest, what was that, flyweight? Almost flyweight, get cut? Yeah, you know, well, 125 because... will go away because that's the problem, right? Because you look at general consumption, and this is like a business perspective that I would have. It's like people want spectacle, mm-hmm. heavyweight spectacle. It's like, oh, my God, something's going to happen any time. When you watch 125 and you see guys that are just so brilliant in their technical yep. striking – but it's not entertaining because you're like, these dudes aren't going to go to sleep in two seconds. Whereas, like, Derek Luce in the, in the heavyweight division, this dude just steps in, closes his eyes, overhand fucking right, over the top, night. Unless and you're you a got practitioner. The guy the like, <laughs> Unless you're a practitioner. Out. Yeah, so, like, on the Unless lighter you, weight yeah, classes. Yeah, you appreciate the, 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 the art. Uh, I, I've very, very, I'm a white belt in yeah. BJJ. Oh, so, God. Let's, you are? Yeah. Why don't you ever roll with me? What? You never let me roll, fucker. I'll, Every put time a, I roll at the house, you fucking submit. Put a gi on, we'll do it. Okay, fuck all day. Uh, like, uh, I'll cross red gi, choke your ass. Red I'm not, no, I'm not bro. red gi. I'll go like red white gi. belt one hundred and one. I'm not saying I, I, you you'll be you know more than I do, but like I, I, uh, we'll put on a gi, we'll, we'll mess around. Great, and then we'll take Wait, our, <laughs> then we'll take <laughs> our <laughs> gis off and mess hold around. On, hold on. <laughs> we'll do jujitsu. We up. won't mess around. But, that sounds uh, a little gay tonight, no, bro. No, but um, <laughs> the. Um, I think with the lighter weight classes, th- there's a guy that's one has like some phenomenal record. It's in a very very light body weight. I have no interest as a consumer watching that shit. Really? And and I have a a very basic basic understanding of of, of jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I think to echo Matt's point, when I go to Matt's house to watch fights, I, I am looking for spectacle. 
Like I, I'm, I'm here for a fucking. Well, don't show. you put that on me, Ricky Bobby? I love the lightweight class. It's just one of my like the lighter classes. It's one of my favorite no. But I'm agreeing with life. everything you said, though. Yeah, it's spectacular. You were describing consumer, yourself. Yeah, yeah. When you see fucking you know Ryan or John Jones, these big motherfuckers walk out, and you're like. Anything can happen. That's a brilliant yeah. the MMA. You're like, there's a knee, there's and, a shin. There's and when a you're fucking, sitting here with ooh. a party, you have some beers, whatever. It's fucking and you're, great. You know, you want to watch it. And I've I've been guilty of the same shit. I wrestle fuck some people, you know, because yeah. I'm that much better. We should have got drunk but. and wrestled so I could see how fast you can tap Matt out. I think I will give you ten seconds. You could probably choke me out. We still have time. No, you yeah. can no, yeah, you we'll can hold that. him off. Let's you can hold that. him off for thirty seconds. I am. Um, There's a carpet right here. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, I'll get that, banged up. I was punching hey, but, hey, stuff. Don't sag back, sandbag me though, because you got some skills here. I, know I will you give no, you. I'll, I'll give you pure. I'll give you two hundred and forty pounds of pure Georgia hell for about seven and a half seconds before I pass out. <laughs> I'll throw up <laughs> on I, you. I, I, I told Ryan mm-hmm. on the way. That's here. what you said about the shooting too, and we tied. Ooh. We did time. We did. We tied. We tied. I'm not making excuses. You're supposed to whoop my ass at that, but damn, I, I like Tipsy Ryan. This Hold is on, great. <laughs> wait, he's like, yo, motherfucker. Wait, oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, wait. Oh. Hold up. Did Hold I up. ever say I was gonna beat you? Did I ever no, say anything? Hey. Not a, never. Not never one hey, time. Bader, just so you know, person. he thought it. Don't give him humble. You can he see no, his eyes right here. That, no, I didn't. This fucking baby fuck walked out there today. It was like, I'm the skeet champion. And I just want to re-talk about, I want to bring this up again. Ryan tied you. Mm-hmm. And I'm the only person that shot 100% of the clays. So eat that for the rest of when your life. When does he leave? Huh? <laughs> when does tomorrow, tomorrow after. Tomorrow well, that's after. when I rolled up and everybody was like, Oh, he's the best over here. What time do you leave tomorrow? What time do you leave tomorrow? You're not taking him to the... the, We, (laughs) we all, we all... Okay, hold on. Let's go to the (laughs) San Antonio... We'll go to the National National Shooting Shooting Complex and shoot... We'll shoot real skates and traps. Well... That, Ryan, or we can just walk away with the W like we did, yeah. you know? But but that's like, what well, I would. If I were you, I'd be like, hey, man, I'm going to take this thing on down. I'm going to take this W down the road. <laughs> I, one day, Baker, I would love to shoot with you like competitive shotgun because I can fuck with it. Did you not watch my shooting today? Not only do those clay pigeons go, they go, and when the wad hits them. So, and yes, you can articulate your counterpoint that you were getting easier ones. You're a very good no, shot. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. to be known. But. No, if you really want to. To eat a slice of humble pie, and I'll eat one with you. Yeah, we'll go out there and shoot the yellow course, and uh, that of course. that's one yeah. of those Trust things me, where I'm, you're just yeah. kind of like, hmm, fuck this shit. I'm never doing this again. But you know who the most <laughs> impressive shot is uh, in this company that I've ever shot with? Oh God, Dave Reardon. <laughs> I'm not fucking laughing. <laughs> what? Dave Are Reardon. We went out to shoot skeet one day. He he's never done it. I think he went 18 for 20 on the red course. And was turning them into pepper. He's left eye dominant, right handed. His sight picture, he was focusing so hard. He goes, I can't shoot anymore. So, why? He goes, My eye's cramping. And what the fuck does that even mean? He goes, Man, I just trust me on this. Like, like, I'm left eye dominant. I've been focusing so hard with my right eye. Like, I can't shoot anymore. L- literally turning them into pepper. That was, that was one of the most impressive things. I've so seen. he doesn't work here anymore, which is really awkward. Yeah. He just got, he no just got fired. Dave, do you still work here? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. There's a little alfalfa hair sticking up over there. But no, when you were talking about, well, I was talking about Ryan today because I want to get a little bit more stint about MMA and let's move on. But was how I've said this a gajillion times, Ross, and, and replicate this on what we talked about earlier. But yeah, fighting pro fighters, I just want this for everybody to know, is such a humbling experience because I look at my life. I've trained 10 years, a decade to be a violent fucking killer. And when you step in with these dudes, it's so fucking scary. We're, like that's why I have my Glock here. I'm like, if Ryan gets drunk and comes at me, bro, I'm putting fucking bullets and holes, man. But it's it's so existing cool. Holes. Like I'm a, that's why I'm such a existing. fan of the whole sport, dude. And um, the last question before we can go talk about dicks and butts for another 15 minutes would right. be, what is what does Ryan Bader do? Like outside of fighting, who are you? you I know you're a, you got your you're a dad. You're happily married. Like but, yeah. like what what are you about? Just like I'm I'm, I'm about doing different shit. And it, Different experiences, like gay shit. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> like, hey, how about like, not like, usually, like, but. like with two dudes and stuff at one time. <laughs> right. It's like you know, two dudes wearing yeah, a gray shirt and red flannel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I've been. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Reno, Nevada. I've been into outdoors, and I'm uh, I'm one of those people that always has to be doing something and doing something different. So I've gotten into a, a bunch of different stuff. Now I have a family. I have three kids and all that. So oh. you know, obviously that. Jared kind of has three kids. <laughs> yeah, like kind of, kind of. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah, they're around there somewhere. They're here. 
In there. In there. In there. They're everywhere. They're it's all like He's got three healthy kids. Yeah. They're healthy? Yeah. Happy? Yeah, yeah they're happy. Yeah. But, man, I've, I've, uh, I like to do all kinds of outdoor shit. You know, I like to go ride the razors and shit in Glamis. I like to do all that kind of mm. stuff. Um, do stuff with my kids, hunt, fish. Um, really, just anything different, too. New experiences. So, like today, went out there and fish and, you know, I mean, shot we'll skeet and all that. catching today. Catching, No, uh, no, 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 no. We had, well, that was fun as shit, man. That was, dude, I'll tell you, Texas does it right, man. This is the greatest state in the fucking world. I love lying. it. Like, I, I, I tell you what, going out there a and high having fence a pond. High, high fence pond, <laughs> it's stock, it's catch and release. Like, holy shit, we're managing the prop. God, I fucking love high it. High fence pond, and the fish couldn't th- escape us. That last little fish, I, I, I loved your competitiveness because I saw, I caught those two, and you looked at me like, I'm about to fuck this dude up. And I was like, it's cool. And then when you you got whatever, three or four more you caught, it was be- a fun fucking time. Before we move off the MMA stuff, I, I cool. have, I have two go. more questions. Um, when you got into MMA, like, obviously, you're the champ champ now. Champ champ, right? Technically, he's a champ champ. It's a champ champ. Champ champ. champ. Uh, champ. Like, did you ever get, like, pushback from, like, your, your parents, your family? Oh, yeah. And, like, people were like, oh, you're, this is stupid. Like, and then now they're like, hey, man, we, we, we was just Can I get playing. a selfie? We was playing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, at the beginning. Let me get a couple tickets. I mean, I was fighting for a hundred bucks in like Arizona reservation. I fought on. Uh, I fought in a bullfighting ring in Mexico one time. Fuck yes. I fought. Yeah. I fought on another yeah. reservation in Arizona. Tommy Morrison, HIV positive boxer. Yeah, no. was, no. was a main Morrison. event. Was a main event. Did they know Tommy he had guys. HIV? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How, he's yeah. How he's had he the package for a long time. Fuck, I don't know. Once you're on an airborne reservation, you do whatever you want. Dude, that's, that's a, a good point. Oh, so that's the scariest thing for Fantastic me. Fantastic like, okay, point. Because, you know, I, let's talk about this. Not to go down a weird rabbit no, hole. But I fucking, you know, I've sparred people and we fucking bust each other up. Yeah. I've been fucking hit so hard in the face. I'm gushing blood. Their gloves are fucking bong, bong, coming back and resetting on their heads. We're exchanging blood and you're like, kind of gross. Kind of gross because when you look at MMA, I know they test you what every every, every so bef- before every fight. Yeah, and and some in, are different though. Kind of in the UFC, we're talking about overseas promotions where these You're motherfuckers in Mexico. they're oh, yeah. fucking oh, dripping yeah. blood and like BJ Penn licking it, fucking squirting blood in the face. You're like, that's how AIDS happens. So usually, that's especially like happens. California, Nevada, Arizona, you know, usually most states in the US, you have to get a blood test, HIV, Hep C, B, whatever. Yeah, in the thirty heps. days between, but. There's times where you're like, they're like, yeah, your medicals are good. I'm like, I haven't got a, a test in like fucking eight months, you know? Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah. But I, I get but that that's, point. That's yeah. the weird point is it's just like, because like AIDS and all those things don't show up necessarily in a, like a test within reason, like the old tests were like six months. But if, if someone contracted that, they're like, I'm the new champ champ. And they go, butt fuck a bunch of dudes and they get in the ring and then you're like spitting exactly. blood in your face and you're like, geez. Well, yeah, I, I can't, whoa. I can't believe that that hasn't been like, more profound effect on the MMA community because you're exchanging body body fluids. That's that's like that, that boxing match yeah. of the weekend. You're, you're less, have, have you ever heard of anything happening though? That's, that's something I have. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. haven't, and you're you're probably less likely to get HIV from fucking a chick vaginally because the way it works, yeah. anal shit. You know I'm, what? Sorry, I'm talking about butt sex, baby. Wait, what? Did what? some of that? What? what? Did some of that? Ross last is night, in man. a driveway Jared, right Jared now. Are you still in a what? driveway, Ross? Come so on. so one percent. I'm, I'm in an Atlanta driveway. Once. The reason why I got that wrong about the military earlier by the way was because the chris pratt shit uh, uh he was the, the, the guy he was supporting was military yeah. yeah champ champ comes in and wins devastates dominates joe rogan ends up talking about it all they show is pictures with bader and chris pratt wasn't even real dude gotcha, Welcome gotcha. To fake news you're a superstar now though. yeah you made it when you got fake news so, i said fake news so the all that, yeah when, when he was right hiv positive blood hits Oof. the atmosphere Oof. well tommy morrison God, sorry to cut you off dead. we already goes know away. we already knew that yeah, but speaking of that, like the boxing match uh, last weekend, the, the the ref was like when the match was over, the ref had like a pink shirt on it. It's yeah. like that's not oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not pink. That's blood. So, so yeah, it was a white shirt with with blood on it. So that's yeah. why it was pink. <laughs> but so your parents, you you fought in right, reservations. You Sorry. fought in yeah. Mexico, <laughs> and hundred bucks. They're like you're, you're doing dumb shit. <laughs> well, they're just kind of, they, they've always my parents always supported me. But I told my grandma one time, she's like, what? 
be doing what? 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 Yeah. <laughs> and if I if Are I you showed if I showed you some money, if I showed you the text What's right? I have now, <laughs> I mean she was all into it. She was like, "Hey, did you see that fight Wednesday night?" I'm like, "Wednesday night? What the fuck?" I'm like, "Grandma, you're watching like UFC replays." Your grandma does that text? <laughs> yes, she does actually. Damn, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, my parents and all the day, grandma don't they text. supported me. Mine, the whole don't, time. mine don't breathe. But they were they were kind of like, yeah, what do you what the fuck are you doing? You know, you uh, went to ASU, got your college degree. Not that means shit now, but um, you know. But afterwards, I wasn't done competing, and so they're like, all right, we'll roll with you. And then uh, then you bought your first tennis court, and you were like, what do you think now? What do you think <laughs> now, mom? <laughs> yeah, who's got a tennis court? <laughs> this motherfucker. I don't even right play there. tennis, but I, I got a fucking play. tennis yeah. court. Do you really have a tennis court? No, I don't. No, no. That, it's, it's, he's being facetious. Yeah. Yeah, it's giraffe I, rich. I say that's we run giraffe with it. rich. When Let's you can go, buy a fucking exactly. giraffe. Let's run with I'll it. I'll give you this though. It's cool to have uh to do something where you can bring your friends and family together and it's like a you know bi yearly thing, whatever. Event. We can all get together and hang out, have a good time, win or lose, but you know, be able to do that. And so that's that's what I love about it. I've had a great time. I've fought all over the world, fought in Sweden, Japan, that you know, whole deal. My parents have you know, come to 75% of it. My family's come to a lot of it and to be able to be a part of that and, you know, and, yeah. and, and do something where I can do that and have memories like that. It's pretty cool. Do you remember the other question I asked you? Cause I forgot it. No, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do actually, no. I do actually, if you, if you could get AIDS from anybody, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> That's not go. the Mine's question. Freddie Mercury. I'm okay. Freddie Mercury. All right. Okay. AIDS All right. So, you know where you're not going to get AIDS, Ross, is on the Drinking Bros Cruise. Yes. <laughs> Drinking Bros Cruise. And if you want to go on the Drinking Bros Cruise and watch us get hammered and fucking yeah. talk a bunch of shit, go to drinkingbros.com. There's a banner on the homepage. When is this? Uh, it's September. Yeah, you're September. glossing. Hold on. Hold on, no, hold on a second. You're glossing over this shit. Because I discovered this on the internet the other day, and I was like, oh, man, this, those, those pranksters. Just so wait, then yeah. I clicked on the link, and I was like, wait it's a minute. Real. Wait, it's real. This it's is real. a real it's thing. Real. Can we talk about yeah, it for yeah. a second? Yeah, I, have, yeah, yeah. I have questions. We are leaving out of Galveston. Right, you talk, I get a piss yeah, so yeah. bad. You guys talk about it. We all are right. leaving out of Galveston, Texas. Uh, so you go to drinkingbros.com, go to interact and events, and then uh, we're going to make it easier for you to find this, I promise. But... Uh, the Drinking Bros Sea Legs Cruise 2019. We're leaving out of Galveston September 12th. Uh, we're going to Cozumel, Mexico. So we will be performing two of the nights. Uh, it'll be uh, us and Dan. So Matt, myself, Ross, Evan, um, and Daniel. And then once we finish up the comedy portion, Danny Warsnop, lead singer of Asking Alexandria, comes out and does music for the rest of the night. Uh, so yeah, That's yeah, we're, we're, we're yeah. no, you're not getting yeah, off that easy. In? You're, you're not in? getting off I'd that easy. I right. want more Bar fucking fight. details on this shit. We're having a, a big beach party at Cozumel, uh, hosted. How long's it? How long's it? You, you, you take four, off? You leave? Leave on what four, day? We leave on the twelfth. Leave on the twelfth. Come back on the sixteenth. Uh, four days. Yeah, sixteenth. Do I need a passport? No. Uh, yes. Yes, you do. So, like, do, do you know what the cost is? Are there like different room yeah, options? Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of. You got to just got to click the link, and it goes okay. So let's, you uh, uh, then let me ask you questions about what you fucking know. Is it going to be fun? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you I'm, think anyone's going to get pregnant on the cruise? It, there's well, first off, Ross and I are marrying two couples. Fuck you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, we have two we marriages off. happening. I trust Ross well, yeah. to, to to marry someone. Ross, I trust you to do a good job of that. I don't trust you. Jerry. I'm having. I've married people before. Hold on. Are they I still call, together? Wait, I call, I call. I married him. Hold on, I call bullshit to what? Baker because that's like saying you don't trust Jared Taylor to sing the national anthem. No, He's no, Jared can put crush on that shit. The best performance at Texas Motor Speedway, I think the national anthem has ever Thank been you. sung. So no, no, don't. I, that was say my he best. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was 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 the national anthem at Texas Motor Speedway better than the national anthem at the Drake Bros Live? Absolutely. Yes. I, I'd really? Sang, I'd sang yes. it well. Because that he brought the house down on that one. I but, no, it was but phenomenal to prepare for Texas Motor Speedway. I sang it over a thousand times. How many times did you prepare for for Vegas? For Vegas, zero, maybe, maybe three. Yeah. yeah, see that. Yeah. See, I told Four. you he's talented. So, yeah. Ross, wh what's your take on the Sea Legs cruise? Like, I mean, like, what are you thinking? What, what can people expect? Well, I, I'm having a full blown Jack Sparrow, like professional <clears throat> Jack Sparrow outfit done. That's how I'm so showing that. Up. We got Evan, how many Jared, days? Matt, how many days? Ross, Danny, Danny, and then Four days. Jan. Four days. Four days. Speaking Four days. of Jack Sparrow, do you remember the time you got in a fight dressed up mm -hmm. like Jack Sparrow? Yeah, Dave was there. 
Were yeah. you there, Dave? I drove him home. No. He's yeah. the guy that picked you up? Yeah. In the Scooby-Doo van? Yeah. No. He, it's not in the Scooby-Doo van. It was in his car. But you said it was like the Scooby-Doo van. It just kind of like wheeled in like he it picked up. He was drunk as fuck. It could have been anything. Yeah. Could have been he, anything. Did he look he like Jack <laughs> He left me in the front yard. I woke up in the front yard. After fighting. Yeah. No, no, you woke up in my back seat and you kicked the fucking door up. Yeah, I scuffed his door. I scuffed his door up pretty bad. That's but you hey, fought, Baker. yes, sir. Baker. By the by the way, the reason why you need to come on the cruise is is uh, there's going to be a skeet shooting course taught by Dave Reardon. <laughs> Dave yeah. Reardon is actually yeah. going to teach you how to skeet skeet shoot. So September the twelfth, uh, Ross is uh, that is when I am in the back country. Uh, pursuing elk with a with a bow, and as you and I like to say, that's show business for me, baby. Uh, but you guys, I'll be cheering for y'all. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna tweet the fuck out of it. I'm reluctantly going, so I want everybody to convince me to have an amazing time. So I, I it's gonna be that. fun. You're gonna it's have gonna a blast, man. Yeah. You are. You're gonna, you're gonna yeah. fucking shrimp scampi and shit. Yeah, you I know, mean, I'm not cappuccino. a cruise ship guy, but we'll figure it out. Jesse's have you ever done go. one? Have you ever done for one? the ladies? You have it? Yeah. No, it was pretty fun. I d- I've only done one, and it yeah. was pretty fun. Cool. Where'd you go? Cozumel. Mm. Same. All thing. right, let's reel this back in. All right, Ryan, what a fucking phenomenal guest you've been. You're an yeah, amazing thank human. You. Thank you so much for coming out. Give, let's him, r- you let's guys. give him the drinking bro of the week. Yeah, first. yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah right, Ryan. Yeah, so sure. it's a tradition on the show that we do the drinking bro of the week at the end of every single episode. We're going to give it to you. Who was someone that was inspirational in your come up or helped you get to where you are today? I'm feeling sexy right now. I like it. It's not you, Baker. <laughs> no, but I'm excited Baker. about this. Yeah. yeah, I got. Yeah, I got a couple people. I have. Uh, you know, my my dad is one of the guys that has always pushed me and always uh, has been supportive as far as bringing me different places and whatnot. But as far as getting into this like whole arena and all that, yeah. and watching somebody, it's a guy like Dan Henderson. Ooh. And it was cool. Yeah. He he came in the locker room afterwards, you know, pretty well. But he came in and uh, you know had a good time, and he's one of the other guys that knocked out Fedor being a wrestler. So yeah. he's one of those guys I watched that a wrestler, big right hand. I was like, fuck, I've modeled myself after that, you know, going into the That's awesome. MMA and all that. So, um, but there's been a ton of people. Shit. I, I can't single out anybody. Dan, I think Dan Henderson's a great one. He's, yeah, that's, yeah that's, a, that's a great Cheers, one. cheers. Well, I, I want to I do this a little bit too. So I want to give a shout out to John Hughes. Yeah. Um, amazing friend. Um, he hosted us today at his property to let us have a great time fish shoot on the board of the and boot all of campaign and and yep with the boot great campaign game. um which was who's a, getting the amazing or, organization <laughs> which you know well, you know <laughs> we, maybe, 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 we won. maybe we won maybe we won maybe we won the charity we won. apparently um but yeah kick ass man so thank you so much john and uh ryan fucking what a pleasure dude you're a cool thank dude you, let's ryan. run this again oh, at some point 100%. let's go shoot some shit <laughs> have some fun and you guys are a lot of fun thank you cheers Heck yeah cheers guys yeah Cheers. Hey, and Ryan, can we get Matt Best to bring you into the ring so we can stop seeing pictures of you and Chris Pratt, for Christ's sakes? Let's get what? Matt in there, dude. Dude, I'm, da- I'm so down. Dude, I'm he's so fucking down on Let's that. Blow he's doing my walkout yes, song. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. a different. We're going to hold a... you to that. I want to see Vader versus Cyborg. Wait. Yes. Okay, I'd pay for that. <laughs> Entertain my ass. Well, here, I'm here to be in her fucking tank. I will say this. <laughs> I will write. I will, I, will, I will fucking take two weeks of vacation and I will write a custom song fucking for your walkout. Deal. You tell me if you want it rock, rap, country. I will do whatever, and we if, will fucking we'll crush talk it. Shit about I your swear opponent. to God, oh, in the it. song, yeah, I'm down. Come out totally like I'm down. a bitch, mo, but you king, mo. Like I'll fucking, I'll send it, bro. Like whatever opponent you want, we'll go for it. We'll done, crush it. Done. Because you know when he's like warming up in the cage and you're the champ, and he just hears his name getting talked shit in the loudspeaker. Yeah. Like, it's kind of weird. Oh. Like, yeah, he's got his own guy coming yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> he's got his own hype man. Yeah, fuck. Holy yeah. shit. Awesome. Yeah, let's we'll, do we'll it. Send what it. if that well, like, they springboarded the, uh, you into another career? <laughs> shit, I'm in. <laughs> they had the Star Spangled Banner last time too. Uh, I'll ask. Give it. Give I'll it. Ask. They had uh, Craig Morgan, Morgan do it last time. Country Craig Morgan. Guy. Yeah. I. We were inner circle with him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Fucking patriot. Love. I that would guy. love to. Give us a taste. Oh, I can't. I'm sick oh, right sick. now. Come on, yeah, I'll tell you, Ryan. Ryan, I'll tell you this. As I said before, we started. I said Jared Taylor has one of the best set of pipes he I've did ever heard. Yeah, and he's very talented. And I think that Matt. Doing your hype song because I asked him. Yeah. I was like, "Are you?" I was like, "Are you serious?" And he yeah. gave me this look that I don't get from him very often, which is like like as serious as I've ever been in my life. 
I think it'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll crush did it. the twosies, national anthem, and the hype and the hype song. And then I'll have a big hype song for Ross. Like I'm a fucking fucking faggot, faggot. Gonna That's suck it. some D's on yeah. the beach, on the beach. <laughs> but gonna but, suck but some like, D's whoa. on the beach. But like not like you're gay, because who cares? That's awesome. A bundle of sticks. But like, yeah. a bundle of sticks. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. a shitty bundle of sticks that yeah. won't catch fire, and you put lighter fluid yeah, on wet. it. That's Ross. It's like, wet with pee though. It's not even water. Yeah, Ross stinks. It smells like you know pneumonia. Ross, Not I ammonia, think uh, pneumonia. Ross, I think the last awesome dick I suck was Tommy Morrison, and he turned out fine. Wait, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> Sorry about that. Have uh, you seen the? Have you seen his thirty under thirty for thirty? Oh yeah, yeah. his si- or sixty minute thing when like he was like, I don't have AIDS, and it's like motherfucker. Oh, it's brutal. You got brutal. all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a denier. On that note, so I, ha- I have a friend <laughs> that 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 we don't have anywhere the- to go. I have a friend that has has the cure for AIDS. Just saying, I have a cure for it. No, I'm not joking with you. He what said, is it? "I'm not." It's not a joke. Well, let's hear I, this. I, let's hear this. Let's hear the cure. I can't say it. If there's going to be a release next year, as far as what's going on with it, I met him in a really awkward place. It was in a gay bar in North Hollywood. I'm just kidding. But there, <laughs> there is there is a cure for HIV. And there's a cure for a lot of things, and there's this new drug that's coming out. Can't talk about it, but uh, essentially, it, yeah, whatever. We'll just no one it. We'll Google it. this. It. In, 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 You're about to get Hillary no, Clinton. No, in 2019, hey. there's going to be some big releases in the medical world that are going to take down pharma, and I'm super excited. That's oh, awesome. Shit. So we'll leave. All it at right. That. Well, love Ross. you, drinking bros. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so hey, much. Guys, for coming. Guys.